From 1920 to 1933, the manufacture, sale, and transportation of alcohol was prohibited by the 18th Amendment to the Constitution, a period known as Prohibition. Today we're going to examine the roots of Prohibition and then analyze some documents to figure out how supporters of Prohibition promoted it. Temperance. Prohibition had its roots in the temperance movement of the 19th century. Americans were heavy drinkers in the first decade of the 1800s, but by some estimates, Americans drank about three times more alcohol in 1830 than they do today. Criticism of alcohol consumption began to grow in the 1830s, United States, and critics blamed alcoholism as the root cause of all problems like disease, poverty, child neglect, and domestic abuse. If only drinking could be curbed, many thought, the country would be safer and more prosperous. From this sentiment, a social movement emerged promoting temperance or voluntarily choosing not to drink. The Prohibition movement, the early temperance movement, focused mainly on persuading people to reduce or completely stop drinking. Many temperance advocates in the early and mid-19th century saw drinking as an individual decision and not something that should be against the law. By the end of the 19th century, however, there were increasingly calls for prohibition, which is a legal ban on alcohol. Groups like the Women's Christian Temperance Union, or the WCTU, and the Anti-Saloon League, ASL, began to lobby the government for laws that would completely ban alcoholic drinks. The Prohibition movement was not universally popular. It had more support in rural areas than in cities. Protestants were also more likely to view alcohol consumption as a moral issue than Catholics or Jews, and as a result, Protestant groups were more likely to embrace prohibition as a way to eliminate vice. The 18th Amendment. Prohibition advocates were first successful in passing laws at the state and local level, with over half of states enacting bans on alcohol between 1880 and 1920. Momentum for a national constitutional ban on alcohol grew in the second decade of the 20th century. In 1917, the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate both passed the 18th Amendment with two-thirds majority needed to send a constitutional amendment to the states for approval. Three-quarters of states had ratified the amendment by the end of the following year. The minimum number of states needed for a constitutional amendment, the Prohibition era, had begun. Prohibition. Congress passed the Volstead Act the next year, which defined what qualified as an intoxicating liquor and provided resources for enforcing the law. Starting at midnight on January 17, 1920, the manufacture, sale, transportation, and importation of nearly all alcoholic drinks was illegal nationwide. Interestingly, however, the law did not outlaw the possession or consumption of alcohol. It also allowed alcohol to be made and sold for use in manufacturing, medicine, and religious ceremonies. These loopholes may, would make prohibition more difficult to enforce. So the question remains, why did many Americans support prohibition to begin with? And how did supporters of prohibition try to sell this idea? Today we're going to look at some historical documents and try to answer the question, what were arguments for prohibition?